What's going on guys? Welcome back to the video here on the Water Juice channel. Welcome back to another episode of the Retro Miami Dolphins Rebuild here on Madden 21 on the PC. That is correct. We are back with another episode, another installment of this amazing series that you guys love so much. And we are in 2011. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, we are in 2011. The 2012 draft class is installed. We are going to be taking a look at that in a second. But first, I want to say thank you guys so much for stopping by and watching. Make sure to smash that like button, notification bell, and the subscription button as well. Join the Juice Club and let's get into the video. All right, so here we are in the main menu. We are going to be checking out the college players. And this college draft, this NFL college draft, this NFL draft is quarterback top heavy, you could say. It has Andrew Luck, the consensus number 1 overall draft pick, and RG3 Robert Griffin the 3rd as the other draft pick. But it also has some sneaky guys down in the bottom like Russell Wilson, Ryan Tannehill, Kirk Cousins. So there are some decent options later on. We have obviously Cam Newton that we took last year in the draft. If we happen to get the number one overall pick, I'd be happy to take Andrew Luck as well. Uh, as for running backs, we know that Trent Richardson in real life did not turn out to be very well, but to do very well but in Madden who knows what he's going to turn out to be so we currently have a fifth round grade on him but that could end up being something different I don't know we might have to take a flyer on him who knows maybe we won't even draft him at all probably not uh then we got Doug Martin we got guys like LaMichael James Lamar Miller Alfred Morris Boom Heron Brandon Bolden uh it's a it's a lackluster running black running back class you could say not, not one of the greatest. As for wide receiver, Justin Blackman, who was one of the most hyped receivers coming out of college. He just couldn't stay on the field because he had a bunch of off-the-field substance abuse issues. And I think he had some domestic violence issues. I don't know. He had a bunch of off-the-field issues that kicked him out of the league. So he is not there. I guess you could say this this wide receiver class is full of, of guys who had tremendous upside but never saw their potential. Like Michael Floyd, um, Kendall Wright... Even a guy like Alshon Jeffrey, you could say hit his hit his uh, potential, but I mean he's it's it's eh with Alshon Jeffrey, Ryan Broles, Ruben Randall, Devere Posey, Muhammad Sanu, T. Y. Hilton is here that at uh, the third round, which is interesting. We could take T. Y. Hilton uh, in the later rounds. Marvin Jones Jr., uh, Tommy Streeter, Cole Beasley. It's an okay wide receiver class. I've seen better. And I've seen worse. As for tight ends, you've got Kobe Fleener, Dwayne Allen, Michael Agnew, Ladarius Green, Orson Charles. Now, coming out of college, I thought that these there's two tight ends in this class, in my personal opinion, that were going to be phenomenal, and they're both not in the league anymore. <laughs> so that tells you about my um, personal ability to judge college talent. I thought Kobe Fleener was going to be a no-doubt top tight end in the league and I also <clears throat> I also thought that Orson Charles was going to be a no doubt top tight end in the league I was wrong on both of those guys so take that for what it is uh as for the tackles we got Matt Khalil Riley Reef, Mitchell Schwartz for some reason Mike Adams is a left tackle why <laughs> all right I'm gonna edit that so he doesn't get drafted I don't know why he's sitting here at left tackle it must have been a, a little meme or something I guess but other than that, it's a decent left tackle class. We don't really need a left tackle unless we get a backup. So left guard, Kevin Zeitler, Jeff Allen, Gino Gronkowski, um, nobody else really. Oh, Kelvin Beecham was down there if you missed him. Kelvin Beecham uh, was down here. Yep. Peter Kahn's, Ben Jones, um, Drew Nowick, not the greatest center class, Michael Brewster. David Castro, probably a pretty good right guard. We have to scout him a little bit. A good right guard class. Kelechi Semele, Brandon Brooks, Adam Geddes. Decent right guards here. J.R. Sweezy. Uh, right tackles. Cody Mart or Cordy Glenn, excuse me. I combined the two names. Cordy Mart. I did it again. Cordy Glenn. Jonathan Martin. Bobby Massey. Dennis Kelly. That's about it. 
As for the defense, now we do need some defense because if you see, uh, we have a bunch of Bs. And then we have a C at the corner spot, so we need to do. We probably do need to get a corner. But as for the defensive ends, Quinton Copel, Shea McClellan, uh, Vinny Curry, Olivier Vernon, uh, Tyron Crawford, Malik Jackson, good left end class, good left end class. As for the, the right ends, Bruce Irvin, Chandler Jones, Whitney Merciless, Jared Crick, Mike Daniels, Jack Crawford, Jonathan Massaqua. And then D tackles, Don Terry Poe, Fletcher Cox, Michael Brockers, Derek Wolf, Devin Still, John Hughes, Akeem Hicks. It's a good defense alignment. Snacks Harrison. It's a good defense alignment class. We probably need to take somebody in this defense alignment class, whether it be a Vinnie Curry or a Malik Jackson or a Chandler Jones or even a guy like Derek Wolf or uh Akeem Hicks down here. Somebody somebody like that. We need to get some more depth on the defensive line. Now the linebacker class is okay. I mean, there's some there's some spots in here, but it's it's pretty top heavy. Melvin Ingram, Courtney Upshaw, Levante David, Demario Davis. That's about it. Nigel Bradham and uh Tahir Whitehead are here. It's good. There's some other guys here like uh Brandon Marshall and Danny Trevathan. But I mean, it's it's what it is. Luke Keekley probably going to be a top five pick. Dante Hightower, Bobby Wagner is here. Maybe we draft Bobby Wagner in the second round and get our quarterback on defense. That could be a big move. Vontez Perfect is down there as well. Uh, Nick Perry, Michael Kendricks, who I think Michael Kendricks is in prison for insider trading or something with the stock market. I, I forget what he did. I think that's Michael Kendricks. I don't want to say the wrong name. I think it's my I'm pretty sure it's Michael Kendrick. Zach Brown, um Darius Fleming. That's about it. And then corner. I have scouted Stefan Gilmore because probably with our first pick, whatever pick it is, currently we sit with the eleventh pick and the twenty eighth pick. So depending on how we do this season with that with that first pick, that eleventh pick, depending on which way it goes, we might take uh, Stephon Gilmore, maybe a Maurice, Cl uh, a Morris Claiborne, a Dre Kirkpatrick, John, uh, Janoris Jenkins, Casey Hayward, Jermaine Johnson. It's a deep uh, cornerback class. Cody Sensabaugh, Brandon Boykin, Josh Norman, um, Jeremy Lane. It's it's pretty decent. Pretty pretty decent cornerback class. There's a lot of good options down here for us, so we may need to take somebody there. As for the safeties, Tavon Hilson. Um, Matt Johnson, Justin Bethel, Josh Bush, Michael Thomas, the other Michael Thomas, <laughs> the safety Michael Thomas, uh, Tayshawn Gibson, Mark Barron, Harrison Smith. We may actually, you know what? I'm thinking about taking Harrison Smith now. I mean, we don't need a safety, but hey, it's Harrison Smith. George Iloka, and then Eddie Pleasant, Antonio Allen, eh. It's okay. Kickers, that's actually a pretty decent kicker class. Randy Bullock, Greg Zerline, Blair Walsh, Justin Tucker, John Potter. Very good kicker class. As for punters, we don't need a punter, uh, but Marquette King is here. Johnny Hecker, one of the best punters in the league currently in the NFL. If I do take a kicker, it'd be Justin Tucker, maybe Greg Zerline. But we probably do need a kicker because Orlando Mari is on his last legs. So we'll have to find out. But that is the 2012 draft class. In the next episode, depending on if we make the playoffs, but currently we're sitting at 0-2. So, if we have another crazy jump like we did, was that last season that we had that jump? Or was that a couple years ago? I can't remember, but the season that we started 1-3 uh, and three and then went like 10-6. and six, I forget where we went, but... I mean, we, we had a crazy jump in the middle half of the season. Maybe we'll do that again, or maybe we'll just be really bad. I don't know how this team could be really bad. We're an 84 overall team. Uh, team. We got Calvin Johnson, Jahari Evans, Eric Weddle. We got a lot of good young guys that are high overall. It's probably just our quarterback position that just needs to be upgraded because Cam is just young, so he just needs to get some playing time. We do need to find a good running back. Jamal Charles really doesn't blossom, blossom into the running back that I thought he was going to be. Uh, maybe if he gets more playing time, he will. Maybe we trade Ronnie Brown in the offseason or something, and then we just push heavy into uh, Jamal Charles era as for wide receiver I'm very happy with the way the wide receiver core looks 
this is a very solid wide receiver room with a lot of potential. Antonio Brown has a lot of potential to jump up. Julio Jones has a lot of potential to jump up. Doug Baldwin has a lot of potential to jump up. And then we just got Devin Hester down here that is just here to return kicks, basically. Uh, Pierre Garçon's had a pretty good couple years in the league. So it's got some, there's some definitely some good potential here for us to have a stacked wide receiver room, which is why I feel confident in not having to make wide receiver a mandatory pick in the draft because we have so much depth here uh tight end we probably should take another tight end depending on what the situation is looking like just to have a third one because greg olson has not progressed the way that i thought he was going to vernon davis has done pretty well but greg olson should be higher than that and he's not as for left tackle we have trent williams who we traded away andrew whitworth so now trent williams can run left tackle for us jahari evans is still sitting here at left guard with alex boone behind him uh, center, Max Unger and Jason Kelsey. Right guard, Josh Ditton, Marshall Yonda. Donald Penn and Orlando Brown. So we probably need to get a backup right tackle for Donald Penn to work with. Uh, as for the line, we are working with a little bit of kind of scraps, I guess you could say. We got Calais Campbell and Tamba Holly, who are very, very studly, very good. Uh, but the left end is kind of bad. Michael Johnson didn't really progress the way that I thought he was going to. I know he's still young, and we still have some time with him, but he hasn't really progressed the way. And, I mean, Jabal Sheard's a rookie, and he's already 70, and Michael Johnson's been in the league for three years now, and he's 71 overall. So Cliff Averill, we may dump Cliff Averill. Uh, he's probably coming up on a contract extension. I don't, I'm probably not going to bring him back. So we'll probably get rid of Michael Johnson and Cliff Averill. I think they got some good value, so we may be able to get some draft picks for these two guys. Uh, as for this, Alan Bailey... He's just see what he does on the roster. He's not going to start or anything. D tackle, we got Adamakin Sue and Kyle Williams, who are both looking very good. Um, if Kyle Williams starts to regress, I am going to trade him. I don't want him to. Um, I don't want to waste his value because he's got pretty good value. So we and plus we have Adamakin Sue. So as for linebacker, Von Miller is going to start over AJ Hawk, which kind of sucks because AJ Hawk is our very first draft pick ever in this series. But, I mean, it's Von Miller. He's already an 80 overall, so he's going to start. And then as for linebacker, or middle linebacker, David Harris and James Laurinaitis. And right outside linebacker, Navarro Bowman, DeAndre Levy, Malcolm Smith. I am hoping that Navarro Bowman takes a big leap this season because he's got the starting job now. We don't have Keith Rivers. We don't have any old guys ahead of him. It's Navarro Bowman's show on that right outside linebacker spot. So hopefully he takes a massive jump, maybe gets up to like a 77, 78 overall this season. Um, that would be perfect, and then that would make my job easier as a uh, scouting linebackers. As for corner, Devin McCourty's looking very good. Brandon Carr is looking okay. Foxworth's good. Sam Shields is already a 75. He started at a 74, so he's going to be getting better. And then Marcus Gilchrist is our rookie that we got last year. Uh, Antoine Bethea and Glover Quinn at free safety, and Eric Weddle and Ryan Clark at strong safety. So we're good with Eric Weddle. Not so much... With Antoine Bethea, I'm more comfortable with Eric Weddle than I am with Antoine Bethea. I may move on from Antoine Bethea depending on the free safety class that comes in in the future. Uh, as I said, Orlando Mare is 38 and 75 overall. He can't kick like he used to, so we may need to dump him. Uh, maybe not dump him. That's kind of a harsh thing to say since he's been such a good kicker for us and he's um, been so loyal to us. So... We may just give him like a veteran contract and, and let him ride the bench. Maybe I don't even know. Uh, and Pat McAfee will be our punter because we don't. I don't punt the football, so we don't really need a punter. But he's here anyway. As for the practice squad, Ron Parker, Kai Forbath, Andrew Sandehu, David Sims, Mario Butler, Ricky Henry, Nate Bussey, Marshall Williams, Terrence Tolliver, and Armand Bins are the practice squad. And that's the roster. So I don't know how this team's 0-2. I think it's very good. Um, but. Apparently Madden doesn't think so, so I will simulate like always until something interesting happens and I'll catch you guys back up. Alright, I pull you guys back in because we are at the final game of the season, week 17, against the Kansas City Chiefs. But before that, I wanted to show you guys the playoff picture because we have had one of those crazy turnarounds. We went on another big win streak and now we are 9-6. and six. We've won the division, we've clinched a playoff spot. We are currently the three seed in the East. Uh, I think we have to play the Ravens in the the wild card game. I'm not 100% sure, but I did want to show you guys that, and I'll show you guys the East playoffs. 
the or the AFC playoffs. The Raiders are one, Bengals two. We are in at three. Let me show you guys the actual playoff picture. So Raiders obviously one, like I said, Bengals two, us three, Titans four, five is the Egyptians, six is the Ravens who we will play, the seven is the Browns. Over on the A NFC side, the Bucks, then the Niners, Vikings, Cowboys, Seahawks, Giants, and Packers. So that is what we are looking like for the playoffs. Um, it's been a good season so far. We're up to an 86 overall. Um, there is one situation that I was waiting for you guys um, to be back in here so we could talk about it. Cliff Averill is coming up on a contract extension, like I said at the beginning of the video. And I'm not sure what I want to do with him. Because he a fair offer says $31.6 million. And I'm not 100% sure if I want to pay him that, if he's going to be in our plans for the future. I'm not sure what I want to do um, because, obviously, we have some options on the defensive end side like a Quinton Copels or an Olivier Vernon or a Malik Jackson who could be very good options for us. Or even Bruce, uh, Bruce Irvin and Whitney Merciless, Mike Daniels. Chandler Jones is down here. So there's some options to do um with the right end position i don't know what i want to do i may trade cliff averill to see if i can because i know he has some decent value i may end up trading him and getting some sort of pick back for him maybe a next year because the 2013 draft class could be better than the 2012 draft class but I do want to get some gameplay of the Kansas City Chiefs in here week 17 before we end the video. I was thinking about doing, since this video is probably not going to be super long, I was thinking about doing um, the entire playoff run in this same video as well. So I guess we'll see how many highlights I pull from the, from the Chiefs game and then we'll just go from there. But let's go play the Kansas City Chiefs and see if we can move to 10-6. All right, here we go, ladies and gentlemen. We get to see Cam Newton in action for the first time as a Miami Dolphin quarterback. And we're going to hand it off to Ronnie Brown, who's still got some wheels even after all these years. I'm excited to see how Cam Newton plays. As a rookie here, he's going to have to get away. Throw it. Big catch, Vernon Davis. Cam Newton lobs it. Vernon Davis goes up and gets it. That's why you need a good tight end to be on your team. So that if you need a running quarterback, you need to get out of the, the situation. You just lob it up to your tight end. They'll go up and get it. And now we hand it off to Ronnie Brown. He's fighting for some extra yards. That grittiness is what you love to see from a guy like Ronnie Brown. Are they going to play press coverage with safety over the top? They're going to have safety help over the top for Calvin Johnson. So I'm just going to take off and run with Cal Calvin. Ah! I was going to take off and run with Cam Newton, and I fumbled the football. All right, so after that third down, or after that fumble, we are at third down from the 45-yard line. Our defense turned over the Chiefs pretty easily on their drive. Give it to Greg Olson. He gets the first down, and we continue to move forward. Let's get points here. Jamal Charles in the backfield along with Cam Newton. The snap from Max Unger is high up, but it's to Jamal Charles anyway, and he gets a couple of yards, not a lot. We are going to see if we can get this ball to A.B. Uh, I might have to force it somewhere, Cam. I, I don't know what that was. <laughs> I don't know what that was, Cam. Uh, obviously, if you guys have forgotten, the Kansas City Chiefs drafted Matt Ryan in the 2008 draft, so that is their quarterback. Uh, I'm going to have to get out of the pocket with Cam Newton. He fumbled again. What is with Cam and fumbling? Cam Newton never fumbles the football like this. I'm going to have to look at his uh, fumble rating. May have to move it up a little bit because Cam Newton doesn't fumble the football on, on hits like that. I'm going to have to chuck this back in the end zone. Calvin Johnson, he dropped it anyway. What's the flag? Is it holding? It's holding, so they're just going to call turnover on downs for us. That blows a little... Oh, they didn't call it? Okay, they did call it. So we'll get a couple of, of clips from the defense so I can use Indomitian Sue. I haven't really... I don't really show the defense a lot because it's not really anything exciting. 
But we can get to see... Uh, oh, I gotta change James Laurinaitis' number. I didn't realize he wasn't rocking 55. But we get to see a little bit of the Chiefs' offense and a little bit of our defense. We don't usually get to see that a lot, so... That's a nice little thing. We got David Harris out here, James Laurinaitis, Kyle Williams, and Adamic and Sue. See if we can get pressure on Matt Ryan. We do, but there's an open running back. Devin McCourty pulls him down. Not what you want to see. <laughs> Not what you want to see at all. All right, let's see if we can get some pressure with Tamba Ali here. Oh, they're audibly. What's Matt Ryan going to do here? He's going to hold the ball, and he throws it out of bounds. A little bit of a questionable call, but good defense from us, I guess, to make him hold the ball. He had, he had no options. They're going to run this football. We can't break off the blocking. Good blocking from the, the wide receivers. Oh, they got Joseph Adai. All right. That's their running back. We need a big stop here on third and six. It's going to be Kyle Williams with the pressure. He got the ball off, but Tom Bali, I don't know how he got that ball off. But Tomba Ali was there to stop him for no gain, even a loss. Kyle Williams has gotten pressure a lot. That's pretty good. All right, now we can go and get back to some more highlights. All right, fourth quarter now. Nothing's really happened in this game so far. It's been a low-scoring game, just 3 to nothing, as you can see. And I'm going to take off and run with Cam Newton into the end zone. Boom! Superman! Superman! Dun, 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 dun. Don't, no, camps, no. Bruh. Don't do that. All right, first down and 10. The Chiefs have the ball. The game is basically on the line here. First down and 10. We got to get a huge stop on this drive. And that's going to be caught and stopped for three yards. Okay. The defense ranks 21st in the league entering today's game, the final game of the season. Kind of middle of the road, a little bit lower than middle of the road. And Dominican Sue gonna get some pressure here. No way, that's pass. Oh, that's not roughing the passer. I got to him early. Oh, what are we doing? Madden, you can't be calling me on that. Come on. I did not hit the quarterback late. That's crazy. They call that way too often. Also, oh, that's not that's not pass interference. And I got there the exact same time that. I did in the last play. <sighs> frustrating. Frustrating calls. Because we stopped them behind the line. It would have been third down. And now they've got almost red zone opportunity here. And that's going to be a nice slant route. Come on, boys. We need a big stop on defense. Don't you want to be 10-6? and six? Who doesn't want to be 10-6? and six? Why wouldn't you want to be 10 and 6? All right, the pass from Matt Ryan. He's got plenty of time. He finds his tight end. James Laurinaitis is there to bring him down, but they are they are looking solid here on this drive. He's got his X factor. It's going to be deep in the end zone and he caught it for a touchdown. What a throw from Matt Ryan. All right, our offense scored to put us up by four. Our defense needs to stop everybody. They cannot have a touchdown. Good stop by David Harris. Deflecting that pass. A minute four to go. They need a touchdown to win this game. If they score, it's over. They win. Because there's not going to be enough time to come back on offense for us. So this is big plays here. Another underneath route to the tight end. Dominique Foxworth is there to bring him down. It is third and three. They're going to go for it on fourth down. They have two timeouts left. It's going to be a pass, and it's going to be caught and out of bounds. What a route. Is that Eddie Royal who caught that? He caught the touchdown on the last clip. What a route run by the wide receiver. 54 seconds left. And they are almost across midfield here. Calais Campbell gets the sack. Let's go. Huge, huge play from the young Calais Campbell. Matt Ryan held the ball a little bit too long. They're going to call a timeout here. They got a lot of those yards back. 
They got a lot of those yards back. It is third and five, 21 seconds left. They have one timeout left. Come on, boys. Get some pressure on Matt Ryan. It's a deep ball. Devin McCourty clinches it. Devin McCourty. Yes. We ice this game with an interception, and we move to 10-6 and six on the season, and we're headed straight to the playoffs, baby. All right, so the stats on the day. Cam Newton went 29-43, of 43, 406 yards. He was asked to throw the football a lot today. One touchdown, one pick. As for Ronnie Brown, 11 carries, 51 yards, no touchdowns. Cam Newton did have a rushing touchdown because we did that, obviously. Um, let me get to player stats again. I didn't mean to hit that. Um, receiving, Vernon Davis, 9 catches, 153 yards. Calvin, 6 for 82. Pierre Garçon, 5 of 82, and he got the touchdown catch. Uh, AB, 318. Defense, James Lornais led with tackles. He also had a half a sack. Who did he share that with? Calais Campbell he shared it with, who also had a full sack to himself. And then Eric Weddle and Devin McCourty both had interceptions. Obviously, Devin McCourty's was the game clincher, game winner. Did Eric Weddle take his to the house? He did not. All right, and then kick return, Devin Hester did nothing like he always does. No... Field goals made or attempted for Alindo Mare. Two extra points made and attempted. And that's the game. 406 passing yards for Cam Newton. But it's a big win for us. It moves us to 10-6. and six, And I think we firmly clinch our spot as the third seed. I don't think we can move up, but I'm going to have to check. And uh, I'll see you guys back there when I have the answer. All right, yeah, we stay as the third seed. We will play the Ravens in the wild card game. It'll be, I've decided that it's going to be a full playoff special. So, depending on whether we play the Ravens and lose, then we'll just go to the offseason. But if we make a run like we did in 2008 and win the Super Bowl, then that'll be fine and dandy just as well. So, we've only got one Super Bowl in this series so far. That was that 2008 playoff run. Uh, the Patriots have two Super Bowls. The football team have two Super Bowls. And is that it? How many seasons have we done? That's five champions. There's somebody else that I'm missing. Cardinals. The Cardinals, I think, have a Super Bowl. I can't remember exactly, though. I know it's an NFC team that have a Super Bowl, too. So, I think it's the Cardinals. Um, I'd have to go back and look. But that's going to be the plan for next episode. Playoff special. 2011 playoff special. Well, technically, it's the 2012 playoffs because we're in the year 2012 now because we've crossed over into January, I think. Maybe we're in late December. I don't know. But it's the 2011 playoffs because of the 2011 season. And that's going to do it for me, guys. Thank you so much for stopping by and watching. Make sure to smash that like button and the notification bell and the subscription button as well. Join the Juice Club, and I'll see you guys in the next one. See ya!